Okay, Intense, welcome back to another episode of the Premium Pete Show. Sitting down here with uh, a very good fella, okay? Somebody who has had a long, long journey, okay? Goes by the name of David Proval, mm -hmm. okay? Has played many of your favorite uh, um, uh, characters in, in different types of movies, mm -hmm. different types of shows, mm -hmm. uh, dating back to Mean Streets, mm -hmm. Sopranos. Uh, he's a big jacket lover, you know, as we spoke mm -hmm. about off air, even like my jacket, you know? Yes. Uh, the one and only David Proval on the Premium P Show. Thanks for being on the show. Yeah, I'm glad. Good to be here, yes. You know, uh, we're out here in Cali, yeah. and uh, you grew up uh, in Brooklyn. I want, I want people who, who may know of you to learn a little bit more. Yes. And for people who don't know of you at all, to learn about you. So you grew up in uh, Brooklyn, New York, right? Absolutely. Now, at the time you grew up in, what neighborhood did you grow up in? Brownsville, East New York. How, how was that at that time? Do you know anything about it? No, I do, but I'm saying for people <laughs> listening, at the time- Well, you I grew, grew up, up in, in when the, it was a transition time in, in, in that particular neighborhood, in East New York and Brownsville. And uh, um, it went from in the 20s and 30s to the uh, Jewish uh, mob guys, mm -hmm. Murder Incorporated. To um, uh, to the shtetl, uh, the Jewish shtetl neighborhoods, to uh, where, where I was, where it was black, blacks were in and coming in, and uh, there were Italians and uh, and Jews, and the heat was on. Uh, so it was the fifties in East Brooklyn mm. when things were beginning to become very strange did you have any ideas uh, of uh you know yeah. as a young kid of being an actor always yeah like that was what was your first job that you ever had uh i i had the gene kelly role in the three musketeers with lana turner really yes absolutely but what about before <laughs> be, did you have like a, a regular job that you worked did you work at the supermarket did you oh, work a paper yeah, route? Yeah, i did i had a lot of jobs yeah a lot of jobs uh in fact uh, a buddy of mine from the neighborhood said well, we're going to make millions of dollars if we open up beauty parlors in uh, the 60s sure and uh I invested my time in that. Oh, I did so many jobs. I delivered newspapers at three in the morning in, in LA. I loaded trucks. Uh, oh, a lot, lot of stuff. Now, now you grew up with mom and dad, right? In, in the with house. mom. With mom. What yeah. about dad? He, he, they were divorced. Um, he fell in love with long distance or something. Uh, mm. Did you ever get to know him? Very bad. No, not really. Mm. Did mom ever remarry or have a boyfriend? No. Okay. No, I was raised by five women mm, mm. and uh, protected, and uh, my role models, my heroes are women. Mm. Always been. That's special. You know, for people listening, and uh, that you know that may have similar, you know, had similar growing up with moms or aunts or grandmas. Right. What, what did that do for you without growing up as a father? Did it? Do you feel like you missed something? You know? Do you feel like? Uh, not growing up with a dad, like did, you, did that ever like come across your mind where you felt like? This, of course, there are times you you you, you wanted uh, the, the boy needed that that uh, arm around the shoulder and say, "Hey, good kid, good job, what a nice catch," you know, whatever the moment served. But uh, what it did mostly for me is comfort with women and respect for women. Mm. I know how timely that may sound right now with bullshit coming out of Richie April. You know, <laughs> oh God, Richie April's a feminist. He's a little sissy, isn't he? Yeah. So, uh, you fucking sissy, he said. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, and th that's what it did for me. Yeah, yeah, that's important. It is important. Now, so, so you're working a bunch of jobs and you're living in Brooklyn. You know, yeah. one thing is that... That is crazy, is Richie Aprile? You played such a, a like you really played the part of a Italian. Yeah. You know, I didn't know until later on that you actually Jewish. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, did did anybody ever tell you that you look like Italian or you, you or you the way you moved? I mean, I mean, obviously we credit that to acting, but tremendous wise guy uh, acting skills. I mean, even with internet. Listen. Well, I, I look, you know. Um, one of my very 
uh, strong role models. Was my brother-in-law is an Italian American, very Italian American, <laughs> extremely, and was a role model, role model by my sister Mary. And, uh, I have been um, told that a lot. Mm -hmm. Serge Leone, on uh, a meeting with me, Bob De Niro set up for me, uh, wanted me in uh, the um, um, Once Upon a Time in America. Yes, yes. Classic. And, Yes, yeah, right. And I, I told Bob, I said, you know, Bob, my mother's Jewish and uh, I can, you know, my grandma was Jewish who raised me and I can speak. And Bob said, you got to be in this movie with me. I'm going to introduce you to Sergio Leone. I sat down with eating pasta, laughing, eating. And finally he said, no, you're not going to be in my movie. I said, what? Is, what, what why? You know, you know? He says, because you have the map of Italy on your face. <laughs> Your eyes are Italian, Oko. I said, no, 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 I'm Jewish, Jewish. He went, no, you're not. Mm. I said, my mother's Jewish. He said, and uh, mm, mm. I don't want to say it. Yeah. Do you hear what I just told you? Come, I, yeah. Wait, wait. So, so I got that. Yeah. Uh, but I don't want to, because of respect. Yeah. Since it's a very strange thing. Yeah. You're Italian? Yeah. Yeah. But no. Yeah. But disappeared on me. Yeah. So I am. Well, no, of course. <laughs> you, you, <laughs> a lot. <laughs> you know, so I'm not that much of a bad, great actor. Hey, listen. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. You know, you you said your first acting role was, um, what was it? What was it again? My first acting yeah. role? Was in Camp Sussex, New Jersey. I played Samson. Yeah. I was nine years old. What? Now they, they didn't pay for that, right? Did they? Pay? No, I was nine years old. It yeah. was Camp Sussex. Hey, I, thought you, I thought Mom was the manager taking in all the money. <laughs> no, 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 no. We were very poor. I grew up very poor mm. in Brownsville neighborhood. My mother was working three jobs. Oh, very struggle. Very tough, tough beginning of life. Tough. You know, it, it's it's funny because you hear these stories about how people in your time growing up grew up poor, grew up yeah, yeah. tough times, you know, you couldn't understand why you're eating the same type of food every night. You, you know, people don't realize how much people struggled. When you got older and you started playing in different parts of yeah, movies, yeah. were you able to do something for mom or do something, that, you know, and because and she, she, she knew you were acting, but did she know really Great what you story were doing? for mom. Yeah. Uh, Sid Scheinberg, Lou Wasserman, right. you know those names? Yep. I did a movie, uh, Nunzio, yeah. uh, titled Nunzio, and we shot in Brooklyn. And uh, well, I used to talk about my mother and get great laughs because my mother was not the typical Jewish mother. She was a card player. Poker really? Player. Oh, yeah. And uh, <laughs> so she's a poker player. <laughs> she's Romanian. And uh, Paul Muni once said, Romanian Jews have two choices in life, to be either gamblers or actors. <laughs> really, really, they flew her out here, put her in a limo and the whole thing. And and they put my picture up years ago in uh, 1977 mm. in the uh, commissary in uh, Universal. They put my picture Okay, up. nice. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, not my picture, pictures of James K Stewart and Dylan Burston and, you know, pictures of the movie stars. Sure. And they wanted her to see it and put her at the table there to see the, and she, under the picture, and she looked and she saw it. And she said, you look like a funny looking Jerry Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> they expected a line like that or something. They can't just compliment you. Exactly. You, know? you got to give you a little, exactly. like an Italian little mother look. or any mother. Yeah. Yeah. They got to give you a little, they gotta like, break like uh, Mama Soprano. You yeah, yeah. got to break your chops. Right. Yeah, she was, uh, she was classic. You know, you, you think back, so you're able to show mom that you're working, you're doing So she things. saw that. Yeah, she yeah. Loved it, and that yeah. was special for her to see that. It was special and... Uh, then she saw my name in the papers once and she said, Oh my God, see, he's got the papers. And that was lovely. Mm -hmm. That was good. Well, God bless uh, mom. You know, when you think about. She was 93 when we lost her. Yeah, yeah. Rest in peace. Yeah. You know, you, you think back to mom and, and, and being able to show her and then moving on, like I said, to doing different other movies and even the Mean Streets. You know, you think about that. That's my first movie. Scorsese. 
right? Right. But how the fuck did they find you? Okay, we. Uh, I had a. Uh, but, uh, I was a member of a workshop with John Voigt and uh, Richard Dreyfus and myself. We were we were all a member of one workshop. The teacher had left and we kept it going. And John had come to me and said, "I met this guy, really an interesting filmmaker um, named Scorsese. He wants me for a movie." I said, "Oh, really?" He says, "But the other role in this movie is your role, and I, I want you to meet him." And that's how I met Marty Scorsese. Of course, Scorsese first went to Voight for the Charlie mm -hmm. role, mm -hmm. to play Charlie, because he found out that Voight had Catholicism uh, possible. He, he was on his way to, to, yep. the, to the, you know this, mm -hmm. right, and uh, to the seminar, to the whatever you... Now, did uh, when they said it was your role, did, did but did he tell you what it was for, or did, you know? No, he said I just like this guy. There's something about him. Mm -hmm. I saw this other movie, and that's how I met him. But what happened was he dropped out because he said, "Look, I can't do this movie. What am I going to do? Uh, uh, break my nose and dye my hair for your career, yeah, David?" Yeah, yeah. yeah, he says I can't do those. Things. I can't play an Italian. He, I said I, I understand everything. I mean, me, I was just happy to be. Sure, that. sure. And, and then I got a call to meet Marty again a while later, and he had already saw the Nero, and he had already knew Harvey from Who's That Knocking, mm -hmm. the first one they did, you know? So that was that. He says, But I want you in this movie. And I said, Okay, whatever you want me in. And that was that from Mean Streets. But uh, my heart broke once when I was reading. Why Marty cast David Proval in Mean Streets was he was rounder and thicker, and he wanted a. Uh, I was I, I go up and down and wait over my life, and I said, "Oh shit!" I thought it, he saw me work in my workshop. I thought it was my my talent. It was my fat fat ass that <laughs> that put me in that movie. So I was really upset about that. <laughs> <laughs> what was your first impression of Martin Scorsese? Um, my first impression was this guy is, um, a young, eccentric, but there's something very special. Right away, I felt that something mm. very special. Mm. He, uh, I knew nothing. I knew this on a movie set, which I still know nothing. But I said, this guy knows something. I saw him move around a movie set. He loved being there. He, 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 he saw something. Mm. And... Then when I started working for him, he gave me all the freedom in the you can possibly long for an actor for a director to to have that kind sure. of trust trust and, and that I knew and I knew that character because mm. I grew up around a lot of times. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, forget about it. Hey, hey, who are you looking at? What? <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> Now, I mean, look, first of all, I, I can't even, I, I had to write down what a list there is, but people, know, if people listen, what are I mean, we saying? Are we doing too much? Or no, if people don't, if people, let me explain something to you. This guy, uh, David Proval, okay, has not only been in Mean Streets like we spoke about, Sopranos is Richie Aprile, okay, The Shawshank Redemption, mm. The Phantom, correct me if I'm wrong, mm. Mob Queen, mm. Four Rooms, UHF, mm. Uh, Innocent Blood, yeah. The Siege, The Monster Squad, yeah. Bookies, Ball of Balls of Fury, <laughs> and you had cameos in the Brady Bunch movie, yeah. Smoking Aces, yeah. uh, television shows, uh, Picket Fences, Boomtown, and Everybody Loves Raymond. Television has been good to me. Really? Why? We're characters. Yeah. I've had great characters on, on television shows. I've had, I played a rabbi on, on West Wing. I played a priest on some, uh, I played a uh, 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 Vietnam vet. Uh, Kojak the Equalizer, Miami Vice. That was the first episode of uh, Kojak I did. Yeah? Yeah, the with Harvey Keitel. Yep. Yeah. Um, no, television has really been good to me for character work. Really. And, you know, film. Is, I mean, I've been lucky. And then uh, things stopped when I, I became ill. You know? Yeah. What happened? You got sick? Mm -hmm. Yeah, very seriously sick. And... Uh, how how's everything been uh, better? Everything's fine. Everything's great. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, you know, uh, 
Thank you. Many people obviously know you as Richie Aprile. Yes, of course. From The Sopranos. Of course. Even out here, I asked you when you're out in LA, does people see you and say anything? What do they say to you when they see you, fans? What do they Richie, say? Richie. Richie. Yeah. It's Richie mostly. You know, I'll tell you, the cop came up to me. Two of the greatest compliments I've ever gotten as an actor was when um, a wise guy came up to me in an airport. Uh, I had to get on the plane uh, because I was late, and he came up to me, and I yeah, I know a wise guy because I yeah, for sure, for all sure. Right. Yeah. And he said to me, "I want you to take a picture with my wife." I said, <laughs> I, "I'm running. I got. I have to. I have to get on the plane." But you know, he said, "Say hello to Jamesy." I said, "Who?" He said, Jamesy. So I'm supposed to know who Jamesy is. So I said, oh, okay, okay. He says, take a picture of my wife. I said, I can't, I, I run. And then he grabbed my arm. He did. He said, you're not going to take a picture with my wife? It was very, I did take a picture with his wife, by the way. <laughs> he let me go. But it was a great compliment because he got hurt by it. Yeah. You know, he didn't yeah. get angry. He got hurt. He, like we were, you know, there was something about it. It's classic. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, b- before we went on air, you were telling me uh, about, obviously we speak about Richie Aprile. Everybody knows about the jacket, the jacket that you gave Tony Soprano. Yeah, people bring that up. People bring it up, and we have news that it recently was auctioned off for like ten thousand dollars. Absolutely, yeah. I was told that in, in uh, Niagara Falls uh, last month. Really? Yep. Now, yeah. with David Chase, when they when they did they come to you with this part about the fucking jacket, like, or did you did was that improv? A little no, bit no, it was David. It was David, and the only thing about it was I remember saying, "He looked like," and he just passed away. Um, Kendafin. No, no, no. Uh-huh. Uh, Robert, uh, you're going to look like Robert Evans. Robert. Yes, 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 yes. And I said, I said, so who knows who Robert, you know, how many people really know Robert? Yeah, who, who that guy is. I yeah. said, Burt Lancaster, I would say, or, you know, and he was insistent, I think, David Chase was to say Robert Evans. I think it was something personal with him. He wanted to say Robert Evans. That's what I remember about that scene. I didn't want to. And the belt, the belt. Yeah, yeah. The- <laughs> uh, well, listen, now that we're on Sopranos, Richie Aprile, what, how did this even happen? How, does, how, did, how do you, David Proval, even, like, did you know that they were casting for this? I did a Rockford Files. Uh, a lead character, mob guy, uh, who was on lithium. And when he didn't have his lithium, his prescription, he became very feisty. And uh, uh, James Garner is the lead and the executive producer, and they cast me in this role. Uh, The writer was David Chase. Mm. One day in... The band going to a location. I hear David Chase talk about this character, Joe Adamo. And I turn, I said, I played a character named Joe Adamo. He says, and David said, I know, I wrote it. And I said, backing out, right? Oh, God, I insulted the king. Oh, my God. No. Oh, I said, I, I knew that. And he says, No, you didn't. You're a fucking liar. You didn't know that. You know that. You didn't know that. And I didn't know it. But that's how I met David. I played a character of his. And then they had me in when they were casting Sopranos. And uh, I know there was, for, for, for Tony Soprano, for the lead. Wait, so they they brought you in to? For, to play Tony. Really? Yeah, initially. And, and, and how did that go? Uh, they called me back. And uh, there was an offer to Chaz Palminteri, I heard. Yeah, 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 absolutely, yep. Uh, I heard about true, that That's true, yes. And they were honest and they said, you're too, you look too right. And they were right. I, if I moved in, I'd look like some sure, mob okay. guy. Yeah, right. no, sure, I get it. I get <laughs> it. Know? So I look too right. And, uh, uh, okay, but we're going to find something. I remember. And that's. Was, 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 was Sopranos already going at that time? No, they were casting. Still. Okay, okay. And then I heard James got it and they had a first season. I wasn't a pop. You know, I didn't know that. Then they called me in and I read for the casting person, Joanna uh, Walken. Yep. Um, what did I say, Joanna Walken? Walken. And um, it was just a reading for her. 
And I didn't think anything was going to happen. And she, and she said, oh, where, where, where are you staying? And blah, blah, blah. And I'm here on a couch in New York or whatever. And then I got home to L.A. and they called me. I flew back to New York, went back to L.A. And then they called me back three times. To, to do what? More cast? To, to- well, the last time I went there, who was there? Um, uh, who was there was uh, Jimmy Russo, good actor. Mm-hmm. really good actor and a great at robert pastorelli mm. was there they still had three guys and me so so and i went so, i can't think this shit. so so all of them were were trying out for richie april yeah what the fuck yeah still to the last day and hbo was right there. yeah it's a killer man it's a killer <laughs> and you know you, you, you so did you feel did you feel i know obviously i i could tell as you're speaking about it it was a little you know anxiety and frustration like oh my god you're rage i'm going back and forth but they didn't know that no, no it was none of that business that. anyway but did you feel in your heart of hearts that you were going to get that part i felt i knew the music And there was a particular line that uh, it was Frank, uh, um, Frank Pirelli, Frank, the one of the writers on the first season. Yep. Yep. Okay. Please. uh, Don't worry about it. Frank. Frank. Anyway, uh, he wrote a line and the line was, uh, he's in this pizza place with, with Beansy. And he says to Beans, he asks him a question about uh, how much is this grind out a, a, a month? Uh, no, how much you get out of this a month? Or well, something like that. And Beans said, well, it's a grind. And there was a response is, that's not what I asked you. And I remember that response. <laughs> and I know guys who... When you when they had that kind of response, there's trouble right there. Yeah, sure, it's brewing. <laughs> the, the flame is lit. Yeah. And he wrote it. It's a beautiful line. Renzulli, Frank Renzulli. Okay. Frank Renzulli. It's a beautiful line. And I said, I can I can taste that line. I can smell that line. I can ingest that line. I know this character. Mm. And David knew I knew it. Mm. And 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 so did he formally say you got the part like did how, how did you know you got the part because keep in mind you're going back and forth from la to new york the agent called right away i who, went back who called the, uh, his his uh here's what i did yeah. i went back to the hotel room i went i was across the street from the museum and i went into the museum i was so disgusted with i wanted it so badly the first season was so brilliant and i wanted to be part of it. Sure. this thing this event and uh uh, I went to the museum for some strange reason. I was ran the the dinosaur was right in front of me. This is all, and and I, I said, if I was this big, they wouldn't give me this role. I remember saying that to myself. Went to yourself. <laughs> yeah, I was going nuts. I went out, went back to the room. Phone rang. You got it. Really? Yeah. How'd you feel? Elevate, uh, levitating. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. Did you celebrate? Did you have a drink? Did you go out to eat? What, like, what, what do you do? Because here's the thing. You live, you live, you live the. I called Cheryl. She was in LA. Your wife. Right, right away. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 uh, did she knew already or something? Really? I think so. Who knows? That's why you knew she was the right one. For yeah. You. yeah. You know, you, you, you lived, how old are you? 70. Oh, man. You're not man. Listen, you live. Seventy-seven. Seventy-seven. 77. 77. Yeah. Seventy-seven years old. Did Did you take when you had when you got these roles like in The Sopranos or anything? Did you take the time to celebrate them? You know, how some people don't celebrate their wins. They, right. They keep on thinking there's a finish line. Right. Did 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 you take like Did you take a moment? Did you go out? Did you buy buy yourself a a new car? Did you um, you know? No, what I, I what happens with the few times it's happened in Soprano was one of those was um, my mother's superstition. My mother's a Romanian, a Romanian Jewish yes. princess who is so when good things happen, don't celebrate. Because they'll go away, <laughs> <laughs> shit like that. You know, don't don't put the the, uh, the, the 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 horns on it. Sure, sure. 
The Maloik. The Maloik. My mother spoke Italian, by the way, because she spoke Romanian, and it's, they're similar. Yeah, similar, yeah. yeah so, so, and, and, and that was ingrained and ran in my blood. So something good happened. I went, okay, let's just shut it down and just do the job. It's a terrible thing to happen. But uh, I've learned better to, to, to uh, celebrate. Mm. A little late in life. It doesn't matter. Never too late. You're still living. You, you know, you, you, How do I look? Do I look all you're right? You're good. You look real good. You uh, look good. You look like a real Rockefeller. You know? Do I look like a Rockefeller? <laughs> How old are you? You're a kid. You're about um, 40. 44. Well, but kid, but, but kid, kid, I... I but you got I, an old soul, but something about you that's yeah, older. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. No, really, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm impressed with that. Thank you, you. You got like an old soul about you. I appreciate that. You know... Especially it, how you're handling this. Brooklyn guys, we, we connect. Yeah, you, we do. You know, um... I want to get a little bit more into your, your the you know Richie Aprile and the character you played on Sopranos. You know what? Let's take a quick break. Yeah. Sitting here with the one and only David Proval. Okay, you know him in many different shows and TV appearances and characters and everything. Yeah. But uh, one one real important one is Richie Aprile. Yeah, okay, that Italian guy. You know, he did time in the joint. That's uh, true. He did. He did. Ten years. Ten years. He did. We'll be right back. Don't go nowhere. Hey. This is Federico Castelluccio, Furio Junta of The Sopranos. And this is a stupid fucking podcast. Premium Pete. What the fuck do you know? Internet, and we're back sitting here with David Porval, Richie Aprile, so many different other character names. You know, everybody loves Raymond. How did, how did you get into TV? Like, did you... Do you did you have to have like a manager or a, a booking agent, or did you know about this stuff like early on? Because when you started, it was early, you know. Yeah, uh, television was uh, when I started was not a good thing to be doing. Mm. Why do you say that? Because what they felt was the good film directors didn't want somebody in uh, in their movie that an audience can see every week mm. or get. Uh, a, predetermined feeling about the the actor idea uh, it was a bad thing at the time it's quite in the total reverse now it just means nothing it was ridiculous but um tv uh was ver- has been very good to me uh, i played um, yeah, Miami Vice. Yeah. So, somebody, we you know, we were going over before we went on break. We were going over all the characters you played. But now, let me ask you: when when you started to make a living, you know, a livelihood out of uh, acting, did you ever think to yourself that uh, you're doing what you love? Like this is fun. Like kind of like where you know people say like, oh, you know, ball players, whether it be basketball, or baseball, or football, they get paid to play baseball or basketball make good money from it and i'm sure it took you a, yeah. a while to make money in the beginning i'm sure it was a so you know different type of things but did you ever take that moment to realize like hey i'm being myself and acting while uh, and 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 then turned it into your, your livelihood you know the first time i got paid for it i thought it was uh the most you remember ridiculous. your first check um Check was. Wait a second. Um, no, I don't. I'm. I, I remember when I, we got paid on Mean Streets. It was a uh, favorite nations uh, contract, and everybody mm-hmm. got the same money, so I got paid the same as Bob. And <laughs> really, how much yeah. was that? Was that a lot of money? That was six hundred and twenty dollars a week. <laughs> Holy shit! Are you serious? That's, I remember. Yeah. How many weeks? And I remember seeing the check. All I did was laugh for a week, you know. And that's how I always felt. Like getting paid was a mistake of somebody's. Yeah. Somebody's, uh, yeah. It's, and I never, um, because, well, I never got to that point. And when I got into television, I, I, I got paid respectfully. Uh, but it was never priority. Mm. Always the role. And, sure. and just to work was a miracle. Sure. You know, when, when we go back and we think about The Sopranos and the character of Richie Aprile, mm. some of the lines, to, uh, you know, are, are legendary. Not only, we, we spoke about the jacket yes. and how, you know, David Chase had this, you know, but then when you think about the lines and, you know, we're talking 
when we were on the break about how, you know, and it, that you're going to build a ramp up to your ass and drive a line up yeah, in there. Yeah, yeah. Or the other one where we speak about, I'm going to put your arms where, you, where yeah, your legs yeah. are. You know, again, was, the, was that fully written? Were you able to ever stretch or, or, or expand on anything? You know, Steve um, Buscemi? No, not Steve Buscemi. The director on uh, on Sopranos, Steve. Yeah, I'm bad. It's all good, Norma. Steve. Uh, Steve. Stevie boy. Yeah, Steve, who is you know favorite son there. That day we were shooting the thing about your legs, your arms, gave me a, a wonderful piece of direction. And he said it's sexual. Mm. And uh, I got it. <laughs> how did he say how did- I think I know how to interpret well what you're saying to this guy a guy who 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 enjoys the payment for his uh, fear peddling <laughs> he sees and it's sexual it becomes sexual <laughs> I mean there are guys who have said yeah that. sure sure yeah, yeah right Sure. Guess I knocked him out. I got a hot on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, there are there are guys like that, especially wise guys. Was, yeah, you right. Know? You know, obviously, um, you, you you got to play a lot of different scenes with the the legend James Gandolfini. Mm-hmm. Um, some of them, I mean, I, I remember too when a couple of parts when Uncle Junior and you came to see him and and. He's like, ah, your nephew has all these jokes. You were saying, Richie Aprile, you know. How was it, play, you know, and I, and I asked this, obviously, of a lot of different people who played in The Sopranos, but how was it playing with uh, Gandolfini? Uh, he, a young man, old soul, something I said to you about old soul, a leader, mm. a young man, but yet a leader, real strength, real strength about him and a generosity about him. And something that leaders have, real leaders have, and a love for his fellow, for his comrades, for his for his people. He, he has big guy, a lot of love. As big as he was, you can feel it. You can feel love from him. Mm. He wanted me to stay on that show. He wanted me to share the show with him. He wanted. He's just uh, very rare. A heart. It's such a heart and bright, really bright, mm. very mm. intelligent. Do you remember where you were when you found the news that yeah, uh, he I passed in, away? I was in in the lobby waiting for my friend Karen Black, who I was about to do a play with, great actress Karen Black, mm-hmm. and she was very, very ill, and we were not we were, we were losing Karen, and I got a call, and somebody said, "This is the New York Post." Maybe we want your response. And I said, those. Oh. Then they told me. And I didn't believe it. I hung up. And then they called back. And that's how I found out. Mm. Yeah. And I'm waiting for my other friend there who's very ill. Mm. <sighs> wow. Well, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's tough when you lose people, especially like him. You know, it's funny how people would say they, you didn't realize how talented he was a lot of people with the ducks and 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 then we sit back and we think about Chaz and Chaz is a tremendous actor but Tony played that part born to play it there, there wouldn't be a sopranos without uh Gandolfini. no there wouldn't be it yeah 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 i think chase knows that and yeah. people know that the writing was excellent but there wouldn't be that was one of those moments it's, it's comparable to Brando with Streetcar, yep. you know, born to play the role and to affect people the way he affected them in that role. People used to, I mean, even myself, you know, we used to run home on Sunday nights. Sunday nights haven't been the same since Sopranos went off of TV. Right. You know, now, now let, let's take them, obviously, as you have so many different parts. I, I remember, you know, dating Janice. Uh, yeah. which was Tony is the sister for those listening who may not know. Um, because there are people just catching up on the Sopranos. Uh, this I speak is a new to, audience, yeah, 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 you know, and, and it's funny, uh, you know, and that's good, that's a good thing. Okay. Um, the gun part where you put it to a head during sex, or or even the when she got when she said something to you about, you know, if your son was gay and you punched her in the face. It, was that was that you or they did like a stunt? You know, you know how some that was. No, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I threw the punch. Yes, they trusted me. We rehearsed it, and 
No, that's control. I remember that. Um, I was, you know, uh, the disappointment, of course, I knew for about two weeks that I wasn't going to be on this. So what did they do? They called you in? And, yeah, he calls. And I, so David Chase calls you in? Yeah, I said, is this a reprieve? And he said, I wish it were. I can't do this. It's written in. Yeah. And, 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 but I knew it. I knew it. But how does, how does, how does an, I'm not an actor. So how does an actor take being basically told? I mean, respectfully, it's kind of like you're off the, you're off yeah, the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, this comes also with a lot of other things. People are like, oh, the character's gone, but also the money's gone. Yes. You know what I mean? It's like, yes. it's real. People, for, you, for other people watching, it's a fucking TV show. Yeah. Oh, what character? Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah it's but, your life. Your birth, it's, 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 and and uh, not only, well, I thought that, um, and it did happen, and then I became ill, that this was a great calling card for me, finally. I mean, I've had a few before that. Sure. But I said, because I think they have, they all were very positive about the second season. It was amazing what they did for me on opening night at the Ziegfeld, what they mm. did for Richie April. It was amazing what they did. And HBO wanted me, and they gave me offers. I just went in for an HBO show, but uh, things changed. I became ill, and I now now what about um? So the ending that was written, obviously by Chase and them, you know, where Janice shot you, yeah. you gave her the punch. Um, even but what about what about the gun with the sex scene? What, what, what was that about? Who who? who I didn't who, like it. I, I I didn't think of, I, I said I, I went to Dave and Jimmy said don't do it. I won't do it. Nobody does. <laughs> Why well, you told you told Gandafini you didn't like it first? Yeah, I yeah. said because the made guy, you know, guys they, they, to some you know Bhutan maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but not to a yeah. fiance, especially and, the bosses. Uh, I thought it was out of character. I just. See, I didn't want to do it, and I went to David. And David said, "Well, does that mean you don't like you? You disagree with my vision?" And I said, "No, I love your vision. I love the show. I love everything." But he wouldn't be doing this. He wouldn't do this. This character wouldn't do this because of, he says, "But this is a show," and he was right. I was just didn't want to do the scene, and he knew it. <laughs> Oh shit, so David! I came out and, uh, and Jimmy said to me, "I think you just blew the show. I don't know what you did, but uh, I hope I see him at the show. Someone said he might be there. Yeah, who? I don't know. Someone said it. My Chase? Yeah, yeah, he won't come. That's why I was saying who. I was joking around. You know? Oh, yeah. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? No, no, he won't. Hey, listen. I saw him at the uh, vinyl uh, premiere. Listen, I think uh, with Sopranos Con coming up November 23rd and 24th at the Meadowlands in New Jersey, which you'll be there, people will get a chance to see you, say hello, take a picture, get an autograph, yeah. and really experience the Sopranos. That's what I love about what the Sopranos Con is doing. It's not just you know a meeting of Richie Aprilia, which is really David Proval, but it's seeing they're going to have Tony Sopranos Escalade there. Did you know about this? The Escalade that he drove, the cream one. That's oh, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, 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 yeah. The, the car that uh, uh, Silvio was shot in, the caddy. Oh, yeah. That's going to be there. Um, they're going to have, they have. Uh, I forgot who the girl's name is, but she did all the the uh, outfits. She's going to be there. She got tons of mannequins sure, yeah. and, and, and the outfits. And actually, speaking of outfits, you wore some amazing mob fucking outfits. <laughs> Now, again, is this something for people who, soon, who don't know? Is that something that you picked out? No. Okay. Did you ever no. say like I don't like this one or you just No, 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 no. The, the those wardrobe people had a connection in Brooklyn who had all these uh mob guy clothing or something. They found a uh and everything was I thought perfect. Mm. Mm. This stuff. It was the shoes, everything was perfect. Now, now, who do you still speak to in front of Sopranos? I know Federico, which is yeah, Furio. Michael. Michael Imperio. Now, you did a movie with Michael Imperio, Christopher Moltisanti, who you know played on the Sopranos. Yes. Uh, was it Cabaret? Cabaret Maxime. How, how was that? Uh, it was 
I describe the movie as Michael's, and I have not seen it, but what I've what I've read and what I've seen of the sets, I describe it as Casablanca meets The Wizard of Oz. Mm. Okay, and it's uh, that's classic. Yeah, it's uh, it's Michael's uh, turn at playing a romantic lead, mm. and uh, does it well. Uh, it's his Rick. It's his Humphrey Bogart. It's uh, and it's a guy who owns. Uh, a, a dance club who's about to go out of business because of the old mob guy or wherever uh, mm. mob guy is has other plans for the neighborhood. It's Bruno de Almedia, interesting guy, directed it, and I think it's going to get a week's run to see if it sure. can gather up some notices or something. Yeah. Now, now, what about uh, you? Also, did a movie I with Federico, Brooklyn Banco, uh, with um, with Federico, and we did it. Shot it. Federico did the the uh, a short of it, won awards, and we did the full length film. Uh, and he made a really good movie, to, uh, a good story to tell uh, about temptation and about resistance and about giving in and about whatever it is the world. You know, you know, back to Sopranos for a second. When you deal with the casting table, you deal with being in what would you when you look back on those moments, what would you say is your favorite like your highlight? Do you remember like whether it be off camera, on camera, you know, I'm there was times when I'm sure they had craft services there while you were there. Maybe it was you know, do you remember moments that you really enjoyed there that were like highlights that you look back on? Um, I enjoyed mostly the uh, arrogance of Richie Aprils, and I was allowed to behave in a certain way on set, and I did it. This, you, this, you were you were a mean bastard. I think the uh, the guys always liked it. The girls didn't like it. Oh, uh, what? Yeah, I, 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 I was able to play games and. Uh, Did you have to hype it. yourself up to be that way? Like you had to get mad or fucking, uh, you know, carry yourself a certain way, drink a soda or or, or a shot of whiskey or you know what you I mean? You invite into your psyche, into your system, a a a a, a, a kind of trend, a, a thought process. Uh, uh, you invite the character and you allow the character to come in because I have a familiarity with the characters and I know what I feel about like a, I step outside Richie Pearl I know what I feel about Richie Pearl sure. and I know what I don't like about Richie Pearl and what I do like about Richie Pearl so my whole point is this is that uh, believe it or not after a while David Proval is n nothing like Richie mm, mm. Totally different guy. Totally different guy. I think now you know, right? You yeah, of course. He's a good fella. Still a good fella. <laughs> Still a good fella. Just a different type of guy. Yeah. Richie was a, a hard nose. Uh, yeah, right. Exactly. He was a, you know, in Tony's words, you probably would say he's a hard nose cock son. Exactly. And Excuse my language. No, no, that's, that's exactly Because we're in the. And you have to invite a particular kind of attitude in, which became. After a while, uh, uncomfortable. Sure, it does. It becomes. Oh, I gotta take this out. I don't want to do this. I don't want to look like this anymore. I don't want to comb my hair this way. <laughs> you, you, you know, I I always tell people when people are doing something that people think is special, you know. Other people don't realize it's regular life too. Meaning, like you may have had to shoot the Sopranos, and you know you got into an argument with your wife, or or you sure. or, or your or, or your your cousin passed away, or you know. But people look at it like, oh, Richie Apri, you know, they just want like that character. Do you remember moments when you know, like a low moment that you know? Yeah, the day my daughter had my granddaughter gave birth to my granddaughter. Was the day we were shooting the gun to the head mm -hmm. uh, of Janice? Of Janice, yeah, and the, the yeah, yeah. And the AD came in and said, "You just had a and told me." And I said, "Okay, here's what I got to do. I got to leave this set and get out of here." 
and I walked outside the Silver Cup Studios in Queens, yep. and I cried. I became emotional. My daughter had a baby, and then I, and I got it. And that's nothing to do with Richie April and Richie April's response might not have been that what I had <laughs> that day, and so that's that's special. Yeah, that's special. So. So you got you look you still you still act, act in you know Michael Imperial uh, Imperial and Federico Casalis you've done two different uh, sure. shows with them that's great you know you, you you'll, you'll be at Sopranos Con yes be able to people will be able to you know meet you say hello like I said take a picture yeah, Sopranos yeah, yeah. Con I've done a couple of these but- November twenty third and twenty fourth at the Meadowlands in New Jersey David Proval that's him. But Richie April, a lot of you are going to be looking for where the fuck is Richie April? He, he's right here. All right. Well, well maybe I'll. What? Huh? <laughs> um, I'll get into character, but. Yeah, I know, right? Well, that would be I funny. Know, be, hey, listen, it's going to be good. But listen, um, it really was a pleasure for you to invite us to your house to sit down and go over your journey. You know, it's kind of hard to ever go over someone's journey in uh, 45 minutes or an hour or whatever this is. Yeah, right. But, you know, because you lived a, a long life, long life. Um, survived a lot of different things, really? and you gave us a lot of laughs and memories on probably, I would have to say, one of the best TV shows that was ever on TV. Absolutely. You know, and as an Italian, I say that, you know, because I remember when The Sopranos was just coming out, I said to myself, I hope this is no cardboard gangster type shit. Because a lot of times you'll get that where it's like, oh, Vinny, bada boom, oh, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was so authentic. It was so real. It was so, it was so special. <laughs> and, and, you know, let me ask you, did, did, did they have like, you know, I forgot who said this. I think maybe, uh, I forgot who I had on. Maybe it was, a. Uh, uh, so I forgot what actor I had on my show before, but he was explaining how sometimes they called in. Oh no, I read about it on Goodfellas that Scorsese had mob members come in, like real mob guys come in, just to help with the actors learn uh, a little bit about different stuff like that, yeah. you know, and 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 learn. You know, you obviously grew up in the neighborhood, <laughs> so it was like second nature for you. But some and, and De Niro too. De Niro grew up downtown. Yeah, he knew. You know, we had um. The- Guys to study. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. When's the last time you seen Bob? Oh, not many, long, long time. I don't remember. Yeah, I do not remember. Now you saw Marty at the um, vinyl rap party, and then I saw him at the screening of his movie. Oh, uh, the Irishman. Yeah. Mm. What do he say to you? Oh, uh, the vinyl party. He said, "If we get picked up." Uh, I I want you to do. I want to direct you in a few shows. I said, "Tell you don't have to say that to make me feel." Yeah, good. yeah. How you doing? I, I said, "No, no, I mean it." Because I saw you. He was very emotional. He was hugging. It was very nice. Uh, well, salute to Scorsese. I mean, he put. Uh, have you ever met him? No, I never met him. No. I would love to meet him. I mean, he, brilliant guy. Yeah. in many ways. Yeah. Sense. I mean, just look for all his contributions. You know, he's forever. The guy's a legend. You know, yeah. I mean, it's, you know, Goodfellas. You think about it, it's so ahead of its time. Again, that's another show, an, not show, another movie that was so ahead of its time. What that it, the way it, 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 think about how how many years ago it was, but how uh, how ahead of he was of how he had the scenes and how people acted and how people carried things out yeah. and how real it was mm-hmm. and how it depicted. Uh, a storyline, you know, the guy's a legend. But listen, um, I'm, I'm again, I'm thankful that we were able to sit down with you. David Proval, uh p- played on so many different uh, shows and, and movies. Yeah. You know, he'll be at Sopranos Con November 23rd and 24th. If you listen to this before, you know, obviously, if you listen to it after, then check for other things. I feel like there's going to be they're going to be doing a bunch of more uh, different stuff. But listen, I wish you healthiness. Happiness, um, and as I'm going to say this to an Italian, Richie April, chin down a child belt. Yeah, thank you. You know, so thanks for being on the show. Thank you so much. You, this is most unexpected. Yeah. Really. Well, especially showing up at your house. You know, it's yeah, like no, no. You're great. You're great. Yeah. I'll, thank you. I love what you did here. Thank you. I appreciate that. Well, thank you. You know, now I'm gonna I'm gonna back the truck up. You know. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> <laughs> Don't get out of line, Richie. All right. All right. Internet's David Provost.